We are glad you're here with us for this weekly devotional. I have begun studying and, and trying to put together a lesson, uh, one that, that I find myself in great need of in these times, in, in the difficult times. The things that, that take us away from God. But I want us to look, I want us to think about this idea of faith and trust in God. I mean, there's no other place that we can trust. There's so many things going awry nowadays and, and so much false information occurring. The only place we have to trust is in God. I want us to listen to Peter in 1 Peter. In the first chapter, we're going to start verses 1 through 9 or 3 through 9. It said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the great mercies, or great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. When we, when we became part of, when we became a child of God, he says, he's caused us to be born again into a living hope. In a world full of evil, in a world full of anxieties, a world full of fear, a world full of distractions, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope. In verse 4 he says, To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, you have been distracted, you have been... Uh, uh, you might say hurt. Uh, he uses the word grieved here, which often means in distress or, or dismayed, discouraged. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire. The gold perishes though it's tested by fire. But he's saying this won't perish. This being born to this living hope, it won't, it won't perish if we will, we will continue to look. He said, we for a little while are going to have these difficulties. We're going to have these, these heartaches. We're going to have these hurts and pains and, and even disappointments. But we're going to fall through. We're going to come through these things. We're going to be grieved by these trials. He said, so that the tested great genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold. The faith is more precious than gold. Gold, though it perishes, or that perishes, though it be tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That we might be willing to praise this Christ did, we might hold on to this hope so that when he comes, we can praise and rejoice and have joy. He said, though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of of your soul. See, we have something more to look forward to than just the destruction of this life. And the pains that we see each day, and we we see the things here, we hold them so close to our heart. <clears throat> and he said, they're a mere nothing up aside that time in glory, that time that Christ comes and takes us back. I want us to skip about four verses, three verses here. And down to 13. And because of these things, because of this love, because of this knowledge, because of what God has given us, this hope that he set in front of us. In verse 13, he says, Therefore, preparing your minds for action and be sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. He said, you know, these things that happen, prepare your mind for action. There's things I must be doing, and one of the, the greatest of those is to live my life for Christ. 
not letting these things of earth distract me from that. Not letting them ask and say, well, why, God, would you let this happen? Why would you let it happen? He said, remember, your hope is not set on the things of this world. Your hope is set on Christ. It's set on that eternity with God. He says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourself with fear throughout the time of your exile. He said, pay attention because it's important. These things of the world can lead you away from God and destroy that relationship that you have been given through Christ. Knowing that you were ransomed from feudal ways inherited by your forefathers or from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of the Lamb without spot or blemish. He says, since we as children of God have been given these things, since, since we have been offered this forgiveness of sin, since we have been purified and cleansed, He said, don't, don't go looking at the feudal ways of where I came from, from the world. Don't, don't go back and looking at those the things and, and say, well, these things are happening and they shouldn't happen. We live in a world where life happens, where evil and greed overtake everything. That's difficult for us to see. We want to look and we want to see something that's perfect. We want to see a place that we're comfortable in where we can relax. And, and he said, it's not there. He said, you look only to God. Seek him. He said, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of the lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but he was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God as we look to this resurrection, realizing that God is the power. God is the power. God is the one who can care for us. God is the one who can give us that which we genuinely, truthfully need. He's the one that keeps us safe. If we look to him, he's the one who helps us remain in Christ. Who helps us to look and see and know that, that Christ is coming back for us and, and that that eternal life is more precious than anything here on earth. But we as humans have a difficulty in often turning back and looking back at, at what we had, what we want, with the earthly situations. We have to trust in God. No matter what happens, no matter the situation there, the things that we don't understand, this trust in God is important. It is so much more important than anything we can do because it's to Him when we look for that eternity. This forgiveness we've had through Christ, that we'd be resurrected with the same power as Christ was to that eternity with God. Proverbs, the 16th chapter, verse 20, he says, Whoever gives thought to the word will discover good. And blessed is he who trusts in the Lord. When he uses this word, Lord, he means that almighty God, that one who is mighty and powerful and complete. All things are through his power. He knows what's best for us. He knows the things that we need and we don't understand the evil or the bad things that happen it's difficult for us to get a hold of but he says trust in the lord look to him seeking him each day giving yourself over and realizing that these things that happen in this world are part of the the things that help build us and to the one who continues to look to God in faith. Thank you for being here with us today, and God bless you.